My mom and dad took a snowmobile when I was a kid. We rode all over the countryside every time it snowed enough to make the ground white. When school was canceled for a snow day, it meant a day of riding snowmobiles. And one time when I was about 12, my parents even took my brothers and I from our home in Northeast Indiana on a four hour trip north into Michigan for a weekend family ride. That was a fantastic experience that I've never forgotten. So the seed was planted early on, and as soon as I could afford it, I was going on snowmobiling trips to Michigan with my buddies. I went on at least one trip every year through all of my 20s. After I got married, I went on fewer trips, and then when our daughters were born, I took a five-year break and didn't ride again until I was 40. That trip was four years ago already. I can't believe how time flies. But recently, I was invited to go on another trip, and I was fortunate to even be offered a snowmobile to borrow since I no longer have one of my own. Hey, thanks, Greg. In exchange for using the loaner sled, I did some preventative maintenance and decided to treat myself by replacing most of my 25-year-old riding gear. So I was geared up and really excited to go. But yet for some folks, when I mention the upcoming trip, they will oftentimes wonder and ask, what is the point of going snowmobiling? Coat, dig, dry, DIY. For those who have never had the pleasure of riding snowmobiles or don't like the cold weather, the question is very understandable especially when your climate doesn't really support the notion of owning your own machine. So yeah, snowmobiling doesn't always seem practical. For example, we sometimes have to drive a long way to find good snow. Now some years it might only be four or five hours north, but like this year, we decided to drive 10 hours into the western upper peninsula of Michigan, or what us Midwesterners call the UP. 10 hours on the road, we're ready to get there. It'll be fine. Okay, we're three minutes from the cabin. Here we go, yo, yo. We rented a nice little Airbnb that had plenty of room for the nine guys that went along. Most of these friends I've known over 25 years and we've been on a bunch of snowmobile trips together and have had plenty of fun around home too. It was a great group of guys to share four or five days with while we rode all around the expansive trail system of the Western UP. And yeah, snowmobiling is expensive. These machines themselves cost a lot of money, just like any other motorsport hobby these days. You have to have the helmet and the boots and the coats and the gloves and all the other stuff that it takes to get these sleds into Michigan, like trail permits and registrations. Well, you get the drift. They use quite a bit of gas too. If you're gonna do a lot of long distance trail riding, then you're gonna need to stop for gas at almost any opportunity you can. Seeing a group of snowmobiles huddled around a couple premium gas pumps is a common sight in any town that finds itself within five miles of the snowmobile trail. Am I gonna be on YouTube? If you want. 
Most of the trail navigation is structured around where we can stop for gas, so you can count on that daily expense. Undoubtedly, you can count on unwanted expenses too, because any good snowmobile trip is likely to have some kind of mishap. If you're really unlucky, you might find yourself with a major repair to deal with, and we've had those kind of trips. But for this time around, we were fortunate to not have any major mechanical failures. This is what happens when your carbides wear out and you still got to ride 120 miles on no carbides. I'm headed to Timberline and Berglund to get new skis for Greg's snowmobile. I think so. You have a kit. So you get the ski and you get two of them for that price. Do you have those? Yeah, I have, I have that. All you got to do is pop the bolt out, pop the new one in. You're ready to rock in about that makes 30 most minutes. Sense. And this is what they call the carbides. It's a hardened steel carbide that wears against the ground. That's supposed to wear these out before it gets to the wear bar, before it gets to the ski. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was optional. Total time since we left was less than an hour. So as far as on the trail repair work goes, that's pretty quick. And yet other mishaps are those that just cost us a little time and maybe some pride, such as getting lost or possibly running out of gas. Remember when I said you should try to stop and get gas every opportunity you have? Okay, we're about out of gas. How far away from gas? 10 miles from the gas station, so. Let's see if we can make it. We gotta get gas, then we gotta get food. We got one machine out of gas already. I think where the tools are. Yours isn't acting choky yet, is it? Hmm. You're close. They'll be fine. <laughs> going up the hill huh it just died yeah so I've went snowmobiling lots of times this is the first time I've ever ran out of gas I never have either and this is two of them running out that's something you know it would be justifiable for some folks to say that the snowmobiles, breakdowns, maintenance and gas are just too expensive to be worth it. And with all that hassle, I can still understand the question for, what's the point of snowmobiling? I had 33 and a quarter. But all this stuff is just part Thank of you. the game. You gotta pay to play as the saying goes. Let's go get something to eat. Yeah. Starting to get hungry now. When you're out of the trail, you're not only navigating your route based on fuel stops, but also on food stops. It becomes a little bit of a game trying to find the next cool place where you might discover your new favorite burger or adult beverage. Michigan is full of little taverns and restaurants that are more than eager to serve snowmobilers passing through their small town. A great way to visit Michigan is to plan your trip based on finding lunch for each day at a different stop along the trail. It's really fun finding new places and breaking up that fast food monotony that can sometimes get me in a rut around home.
But you might say that stopping at a new and interesting town for a different lunch each day still isn't reason enough to understand the point of snowmobiling. And I could buy that. So if you don't want to plan your trail stops based on where you're going to eat, you may find it worthwhile to plan a route based on what you want to see. Because not only are the trails themselves a spectacular way to see the backcountry, there are some really fantastic scenic destinations to visit in the UP of Michigan. When we weren't looking for gas or our next meal, we were trying to find the next beautiful overlook or water feature to explore. Michigan is full of them. Okay, okay, maybe you don't see the point of visiting all the wondrous beauty that Mother Nature has to offer in the Wolverine State, and you just enjoy going for the ride. Because heck, the act of riding a snowmobile is one of the main reasons to go for many folks. They love the endless miles of trails and seasonal roads to explore. There's just something about the power, acceleration, speed, and the effortless ability to smoothly glide across a frozen landscape that just never gets old. When you're lucky enough to be the first one down a freshly groomed trail with nice fluffy powder through a beautiful snowy forest landscape, you'll find it's an experience like no other.
So I guess it's time to answer the question. The opportunity to have any one of these experiences, be it good or bad, is the point of going snowmobiling for me. Because life is a collection of experiences. They don't all have to be great to be memorable, but the experiences are what define us and ultimately how we come to interpret the world around us. I can't tell you what I did at work the week before any snowmobiling trip from the last 20 years, but I know I can remember at least one thing from almost every one of those trips. I know I'm gonna remember running out of gas for the first time for our 2021 trip to Bruce Crossing. That's an experience that's gonna stick with me for sure. And the experiences are enhanced when you get to share them with people you enjoy being with. Sometimes it's family and sometimes it's close friends, but the company you share can really help to shape that experience. Like making running out of gas a laughable matter to remember. So to me, the point of snowmobiling is to take the time when the opportunity presents itself to get away and have memorable experiences. Make some time for those bucket list items that you're always telling yourself that you're going to get to someday. Because you know what, someday isn't a day of the week. You'll just have to schedule in a someday between all the other regular days. So thanks for the ride this year, fellas. I look forward to the next opportunity, but until then, I'll be remembering the great experience I had on this trip in 2021. All right, I think that's gonna about wrap up our trip. We're gonna head back to the cabin, pack up and head for home. It's getting deep out here. And thanks to you so much for watching Dig Drive DIY. Be sure to leave me a comment below of any of your favorite snowmobiling experiences or any other activity that folks have asked you the question, what is the point of doing that? Well, it is probably time to get back to work. So I hope to see you on the next video. Take care. Is this the experience you wanted? This is all experience.